Lights, camera, action. When a script is written that is so bad, no one will film it. These brave podcasters will bring it to life just so they can mock it. This is Table Reads. So the movie's kaput, which means your script ain't worth the buffalo shit on a nickel. Table Reads with Sean McBee, Jeff Lewis, and Joshua Baker. Hey everybody, welcome back. We are still in quarantine edition, so we're all safely distancing. Uh, welcome back to Table Reads. I'm Sean, that's Josh and Jeff. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm sorry. You cannot see Jeff because he's having some technical difficulties. So there goes our eye candy. Now, no one can predict when I'm going to say something stupid. I'm not giving it away with my body language. They'll just listen for your voice. They'll know. <laughs> Shit. How you guys been? Doing relatively well, man. Doing it, you know. Trying to uh, trying to break my corona alcoholism. I'm trying to find the time to be an alcoholic. <laughs> if You're only too, we can trade too busy, too busy to be an alcoholic. Yeah, they keep me working. I never, have never no alcoholism that. jokes. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Nerd. What a what a square with his good liver and his, his decent social standing. <laughs> yeah, I'm the worst. So, uh I understand that we're on a tight time frame today, so we're just going to jump right in and get going. Let's do it. Previously on Table Reads. <laughs> So, George has been giving us a complex web of intricate political maneuvering reminiscent of Game of Thrones, but without all the unnecessary clarity, motivation, or logic. He also gave us incredibly detailed and nonsense plan to preserve knowledge by injecting blended up brains of old scientists into six-year-old children, who will then be a ten-year-old version of the scientist with an old man's brain. Because if there's anything a boy needs right before puberty, it's the mind of an old man. 30 of these brain smoothies are the costs extracted by the Chrome companies in return for their services in safeguarding Princess Zara. When we left off, Luke and Justin, along with the droids, were trying to make their escape from the planet with the evil Space Kingdom's forces in hot pursuit. Fade in. And if you're reading along at home, we are on scene 73, Wasteland Ravine, Tanawi. The general rides at break breakneck speed after the fleeing trooper. His laser sword is raised high over his head, ready to deal a death blow. The lumbering birds race through the winding ravine. Wasteland Ravine, Tanawi. The intercom warning buzzer begins to scream. Oxus rushes for it, but the princess gets there first. Was that was that was that princess? Yeah, you were the princess. Yeah. No wait, I was the princess. Uh, yeah, we changed because was it was Lumpy Amidala. Space Princess. Yeah. You are right. Two riders heading your way. I got three, but two got away. Watch yourselves. Wasteland Ravine, Tanawi. The general is riding neck and neck with the trooper. He swiftly brings his sword down and the trooper drops from his saddle. The momentum of his charge carries the general around a bend in the ravine and right into the path of two more troops charging down on him. The two troopers are taken by surprise. They stop their birds and so does the general. They stand there about 50 yards apart, sizing up each other. Suddenly, the two troopers start for the die warrior at full speed. The general raises his sword and starts for them. The troopers are no match for the general, who kills them both before they are even able to swing their swords. Wasteland Lake Bed, Tanawi. Valor stops near the larger land speeder and gets out. He is wounded. Blood streams from his left arm. Oxus rushes to help him. 
the princess shows a great deal of concern. It, <clears throat> it looks worse than it is. You'll be all right. Oxus motions to the princess, who looks a little relieved. Bring me the med aid pack. If he was clumsy enough to get hurt, maybe we ought to let him bleed to death. <laughs> <laughs> she hands Oxus the kit. As the general rides up and dismounts, he moves to Valor. You missed two. I know. I couldn't. Don't let it happen again. We'd better move out. They might have reported in. Control room, Palace of Light, Tanawi. The dark and sinister Dodana moves several markers on a large map readout to form a line from the destroyed underground fortress to the spaceport at Gordon. The aide enters with General Vader. The patrol was lost, sir, all ten of them. It's to be expected. He sounds exactly like that other guy. Man, which one's... <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> right. what, who is the Donna? What is this? What is this I don't know, but he's oh, he's what? over on Darth Vader's team. Okay. Um, uh, it's to be expected. <laughs> that's your British accent. <laughs> oh, uh, no, that's my new favorite thing. <laughs> Have you found them? Oh, shit. I, I committed. <clears throat> They're heading for the spaceport at Gordon. I'm going there. Have a have all security doubled and making an alert. <laughs> what the fuck? Again, this guy's telling Darth Vader what to do. Yeah. George Lucas <laughs> did not know that Darth Vader was supposed to be a badass until after Star Wars came out. I am still sure of it. I'm running out of voices, man. This this fucking script tapped me. <laughs> it's cause he has thirty million <laughs> characters in this thing. <laughs> The outskirts of Gordon, Tanawi. The spe maybe he was going to fund the movie by just charging everyone five dollars to like be put into it. There you go. Yeah, if you want to get into the uh, the SAG or whatever, you gotta give me like twenty five bucks. Twenty five bucks for a credit. That's what, that's what happened here. Twenty five dollars and you get a speaking role. It'll be one <laughs> line and you'll only be in one scene. Who here wants to yell at Darth Vader? <laughs> the outskirts of Gordon, Tonawi. The speeders stop on a bluff overlooking a small cantina on the outskirts of Gordon. The spaceport can be seen in, this distant, in the distance. The General and Captain Oxus walk over to the smaller speeder. Valor helps the two androids out of their cramped quarters. Your kindness is greatly appreciated. I'm fit enough to. The general gives him a hard look and he shuts up. Mm -hmm. Oxus and the general climb into the speeder. We'll make contact at 0400. If we're not back by five, by 5540, get worried. What the fuck is 5540? Man. It's, um, it's space time. You see, like, here we have 24 hour days, but now he has really a, a 60 hour day because the two moons. Shut the fuck up, George! <laughs> Because oh. it's like 540, 554. <laughs> That's what it is tripping me up. I'm like, if I'm not back by 5540. Because it, it's like he doesn't know because he's like 0400. Okay, four o'clock. And he's like, and then I'll get back at 5540. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, th I think it's just like, oh, well, this, this planet has a, you know, a hundred hour day. <laughs> I guess. And a red sky. And four moons. And, and the sea is planet. made of marshmallows. <laughs> <laughs> I want I want an addendum podcast where Sean pitches us this entire <laughs> script in his George Lucas fucking voice. I want him to defend it against us. <laughs> I do like his Lucas a lot. <laughs> oh, shit. Thanks. I, I really just uh, am going doing a bad Kermit the Frog. <laughs> <laughs> that fits. <laughs> Kermit the Frog here. Oh, that was good. Spaceport. Oh, uh, the speeder starts off toward the cantina. Spaceport Cantina, Tenawi. 
The speeder pulls up in front of the low blockhouse style cantina. Various strange forms of transport are parked outside the bar. Take care here. If there is any trouble, get back to the others. The general and Oxus enter the shabby cantina. The murky little den is filled with a startling array of weird and exotic alien creatures laughing at the bar. At first, the sight is horrifying. One-eyed, thousand-eyed, slimy, Whoa. furry, scaly-armed creatures with tentacles and claws huddle over drinks. The general looks over the patrons, but does not see the contact, Han Solo. A large, multiple-eyed creature shoves the general. <laughs> I was gonna say Josh, go for Java, and you know, both went in. I was like, wait, it sounds better if you read it together. <laughs> <laughs> the general tries to ignore the creature and turns back to his drink. A short, grubby-looking human and an even smaller, rodent-like creature join the first creature. He doesn't like you. I understood him. I don't like you either. I'm sorry. The big creature is getting agitated and yells at the general. Don't insult us. You just watch yourself. We're wanted men. I have a death sentence on 12 systems. I'll be careful then. You'll be dead. The short rodent yells something and everything at the bar moves away. The general assumes a defensive position. His three adversaries ready their weapons. You insist on a fight then? Just try and kill us. It will hurt a little. We aren't cowards. Then it can't be helped. The general's laser sword sparks to life. An arm lies on the floor. The rodent is cut in two, and the large multiple-eyed creature lies doubled. Out from chin, cut from chin to groin. The general, with quiet dignity, replaces his sword in its sheath? What? Why? What, sheath? What? How did you dig, how did you dig, like, with dignity, cut a dude from fucking chin to dick? You're like, ah, oh, very honorable. I think oh, it was really from cool. dick to chin. You know, you gotta go like... This is what I'm saying. Get that, that uppercut swing. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could chop, yeah. do an overhead chop, but I like the underhanded swing because that way, like, if yeah. you're cutting them from the top, all their, like, ability to sense pain is, goes first. You know, they're already dead by the time you get down to their dick, so what's the point of even cutting their dick? But right. if you yeah, go you from the their... bottom up, then, like, yep. then they get all that pain all the way up and their brain's just overloading, and by the time you cut through their brain, oh man, they've had a real bad day. The last thing that they remember is you cut their dick. <laughs> I would have I would have poked out 827 of his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want the Jeff cut. <laughs> it just says he's multiple-eyed. That could no. be two. He could no. just be a dude. <laughs> It's no. just a regular two-eyed dude. The guy at the top says it is a... Wait, where did it... Did oh, it so... One-eyed, thousand-eyed. Yeah, so that's that's the twist here. This guy's multiple-eyed. He's got two eyes. <laughs> George didn't bother to mention that everybody else we've seen in the script is just a cyclops. He's just a dude wearing glasses. <laughs> I'm telling how many eyes he's got. You wouldn't hit a guy with glasses, would you? Oh, I'd hit him with my fist. Okay, um, so other than some dude getting his dick chopped, uh, and the rest of his body, uh, this is pretty much the cantina scene. Yeah. Like, the dialogue is even the same. Uh. It, it just went one step too far, just like the rest of the script. Like, it, it stopped, and it was exactly what we had in the movie, and then that whole last exchange happened with... You insist on a fight then, then try to kill us. It'll hurt a little. Like, they didn't do that in the movie. It stopped with the cool, be I'll be careful. What do, what do you want to bet he filmed that? What do you want to bet he filmed that? Oh, you think there's footage out there of this last little bullshit? Of Obi-Wan going, it'll hurt, though. Right. <laughs> so bad. Because 
you know, Star Wars, I still say, was saved in the writing by uh, Joseph Campbell and saved in the editing by George's uh, wife, who he then divorced. Um, which, God, what a, what a thank you for making him a billionaire in the long run. Dick. Got her. Uh, but yeah, I think, I think that, like, all got trimmed down to look the way it looks. Because, you know, it's, like, a little unclear what happens. You just see, like, Alec Guinness move around a bit and hear some noise and some flashes of light. And then there's, you just cut to an arm on the floor that doesn't right. even match the arm of the character it was cut off of, by the way. Right, the wolf man shit. Yeah, that dude has had, like, hoof arm, hoof hands or whatever and then there's like a wolf man arm on the ground You're like what fucking where the fuck did that come from what if he didn't cut the guy's arm off what if he missed and cut the guy next to him and the guy's like it sobered him up he's like oh shit oh <laughs> Never mind, I got no beef. <laughs> so uh yeah um like i know that um han solo when he sits down at the table he's actually like there's a whole conversation he has with some girl. And when you see him, he's not actually sitting down at the table. He's just scooting over into the spot she just vacated. You can find that footage online. Oh, sick. But when you cut her out, it looks like he's moving in and sitting down at the table. But he was already sitting there. And he just scooted over. Uh, where the fuck were we? You Laser were, sword sparks to life. Machine. Uh, you were in the middle of the paragraph right above AD. Oh, chin to groin. We'll start there. The general with great dignity replaces his sword in its sheath. Not that. Uh, the entire fight has lasted only a matter of seconds. A figure stands in the doorway watching the general. As soon as the general notices him, he leaves. The cantina goes back to normal, as if nothing had happened. Although the general is given a respectable amount of room at the bar. The die finishes his drink and then leaves. Captain Oxus follows. So what I think happened was George had like a handful of lines of dialogue and scenes that he just fucking loved. That probably are in every draft of this. And so you've got all this garbage we're reading. And there's just like individual little scenes that remain in his completely re-envisioned Star Wars like almost word for word no oh, absolutely I still hold the theory this is just a scratch pad of ideas that's just a little well a little more well organized is it <laughs> I mean this is I don't normally write my ideas in an entire script he literally, like, just handed a, a marker board to someone and was like, transcribe that. Yeah, what is that? <laughs> or I guess not a marker board at the time. Did marker boards not exist back then? Chalkboard. That's even worse. <laughs> this is just, like, inhaling chalk fumes while he writes this. Drew it in the sand with a stick. Yeah, sand <laughs> sucks. It gets everywhere. Oh. It gets, it gets, it gets all over my notes. <laughs> it gets on my notes. It gets all over my money. <laughs> Try to cast when you can't see because of the sand. Or my money. <laughs> Spaceport alleyway. Gordon. Tanawi. General Skywalker. Embr Can I just say one more thing? I think Moss Eisley is a better name than Gordon. That was kind of the funny part last time. Like, all these funny names. Like, I'm going to Tanawi. Where? Gordon. Yeah. <laughs> General Skywalker embraces Han Solo, the underground contact. Han is a huge green-skinned monster with no nose and large gills. <laughs> <laughs> of course he is. You old star dog. Took a war to get you out here. I love it. Oxus. Old, old, old uh, Harrison Ford. Yep. <laughs> okay, we can't see you, but I want you to point every time oh. you say anything. 
You got to point with three fingers, and you have the top one, the top finger, like, curled back like a gun. Yeah, he's like, listen here, buddy. <laughs> I'm not leaving my kitchen. Oxus arrives with Captain Valor, the princess, and her brothers, and the two puzzled androids. It's been too long. We've been through much together. It would be good to have you out of retirement and back at my side. How is General Valor? This is his son. You're all the old boy will get. Uh, sorry. <clears throat> You're all the old boy will talk about. He's still holding up. Come, let's get off the street. The group enters a small doorway at the far end of the alleyway. On the main street, within view of the doorway, giant royal air tanks and other military hardware rumble through the city. Starving refugees sit in the gutter watching the immense display of force with a mixture of awe and terror. The princess stops for a moment and stares at her people, watching the might of the kingdom. The general escorts her through the doorway with the others. Slum dwelling, living area, Tanawi. The seedy dwelling is dark and dingy. The group is greeted by three underground leaders and the old Dai, Akira Valor. Yes. Justin embraces his father as the underground leaders bow before the princess. Slum dwelling, dining area, Tanawi. The princess walks through the dining area, followed by Oxus and Valor, who carry the two sleeping princes. The general sits at a large table, finishing dinner with Han, Akira, and the three underground leaders. Oxus returns from the bedroom. Captain, why don't you take the androids into the other room for a game of chess? I'm sure they'd enjoy it. A wonderful idea. Your kindness is greatly appreciated. Oxus escorts the two robots into the next room. Datos, a thin, wizened old man, seems greatly relieved. Okay, we need a Datos and an Akko. Who you wants want to be Dato? who? Uh, who's Akko? Akko is a brash young rebel. Yeah. I can do Dat I'll do Datos. That way I can just do my Ian McKellen. <laughs> Okay. You're taking a great risk traveling with them. This whole operation sounds bad to me. I don't trust the chrome companies. Time is growing short. The king's attempts at control have already caused a great deal of suffering to our people. Akko, a brash young rubble about the same age as Captain Valor, slams his fist on the table. It must happen now. We are ready. Each day the Royal SBT finds and destroys a few more in the organization. We cannot wait any longer. Any uprising without a coordinated attack on the Death Star is out of the question. He's right. As long as it's operational, any action down here could be meaningless. We must proceed as planned. Are the arrangements secure? Quist, the third Mark. member of the Underground, <laughs> sparks to life and places several discs and badges on the table. <clears throat> Hold on, I gotta come up with a voice real quick. He doesn't even tell you who this is. No, he just sparks <laughs> to life. <laughs> I'm here. Uh, all passenger transport has been suspended, so we've arranged for you to travel as the crew of a Baltarian fighter. The boys will have to be placed in suspended animation and hidden in shielded micropacks. It's the only way we will be able to get them past the scanners. Were you able to acquire the necessary power packs? It's become a serious problem. All power supplies have been restricted. S4 units are impossible to come by. I know an agent who might be able to acquire them for us. I'll help with them. It'll be risky. But we've no other choice. Spaceport observation deck, Tanawi. See, the thing is, I know I didn't need to, like, do a voice that I would remember later. Because we're never seeing those three guys again, right? <laughs> I uh, hope not. No, I miss Dato, Clato, and uh, Quist. Baricto. <laughs> Nick Barato. Two. <laughs> Spaceport observation deck, Tanawi. The dark figure of Dodana stands overlooking a group of Tanawi partisans who are being tortured in the plaza below. 
two royal officers are finishing a report to the evil legionnaire. They salute smartly, then leave the observation balcony, passing Kuro, one of General Vader's aides, who approaches Dodana and bows low before him. Kuro and the legionnaire carry on an animated conversation. It is inaudible over the screams of the tortured partisans. Slum dwelling, alleyway, Tanawi. Residents glance fearfully from their windows as six royal stormtroopers make their way through the crowd, crowded slum alleyway. Han Solo and Captain Valor move cautiously past the royal patrol and disappear into the shabby hideout of the partisan underground. Slum dwelling, main area, Tanawi. The two men enter the dingy main room of the slum dwelling and are immediately attacked by Oeta, wielding a toy sword. <clears throat> Valor good-naturedly fends off the young prince as Han, in a more serious mood, goes into the other room. A2 and C3 are helping Puck put together a block-like puzzle. Princess Zara comes in to see what all the commotion is about, just as the young captain grabs Oeta by the foot and holds him upside down. Valor and Oeta are laughing uproariously. Zara gives the captain a stern, disapproving look, then returns to the other room. Slum dwelling, dining area, Tanawi. General Skywalker, Captain Oxus, and Datos are in the process of assembling two micro packs on the kitchen table. Han pulls a small silver power pack from his pocket and places it on the table. The old die, Akira Valor reaches over with his one good arm and takes it. He inspects it carefully. Princess Zara sits quietly behind the general. We can only get one unit. Their methods are proven to be very effective. Akira places the power pack back on the table. The pain from those simple <laughs> movements shows on his face. Here we go. <clears throat> this will work fine. One of the boys will have to stay. We can't hide him for very long. The risk is too great. Whichever boy doesn't go must be destroyed. What the fuck? Yes! I just love that Jeff just read three characters in a I row. Nice work, Jeff. <laughs> I did it. That's first roll through, too. Nice. Yeah. The princess is alarmed and looks to the general for support. He gives her an understanding look. Not while they're in my charge. Find another way to get him through. There's no other way. We've analyzed every possible alternative. You can't jeopardize the entire... Captain Valor enters the room. <clears throat> we have no time for discussion. The freighters leave at 0300. We must get started. Through a break in the door, Oxus watches A2 and C3 play with the two young princes. What about A2? Could... Optimize him and use his energy pack. They're not compatible. We'd have to completely change the system. It could work. <clears throat> there isn't enough time. You can't do it. You won't have to. My power unit has a more than half right. Use it. The withered die opens his tunic, revealing a metallic chest covered with electrodes. With his one good arm, he grabs his chest and rips loose a miniature power unit similar to the one on the table. Everyone is taken by surprise. <laughs> yeah. Definitely, definitely that kind of surprise. The general and the young Valor both rush to the side of the dying die. The old man turns to his son. Trust of my judgment, son. Serve your new teacher well. The Dai's breathing becomes more difficult as he turns to the general. I honor him. My friend, may the force of others be with you. Akira Valor passes on to the other world. Everyone is stunned. The general breaks the moment of silence. May he be welcomed as a man above men. Take him downstairs. Okay, I have so much to say right now. A, <laughs> he's like, oh, y'all need a battery? Let me just commit suicide. <laughs> what is so important about this battery? I'm, 
like I have not been able to process that. They can't find power packs. <laughs> Yeah, but it seems like everything was really fun, and then he just busts up in there like, "Yo!" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is very abrupt and weird. Oh, you need an electronic device? Here's my pacemaker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like. This is the only one. And then nobody tells. And then nobody. he says, he himself says, an honorable death. Like, is everyone else sitting around the table going, "Well, was it though?" I mean, uh, nobody tell his son we got a storage room full of these fucking things. <laughs> yeah, don't tell anybody. <laughs> and then it's like, may he be welcomed as a man above men. Take him downstairs. Let him be below us. Yeah, he's like, he's starting to shit himself. And off in the background, one of the one of the students bringing up like eight power packs. He's like, no, no, go away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, like right as that happens. Ixnay, Ixnay. Like, like, comes in and drops them. Oh fuck! <laughs> but did either of you guys catch what these power packs are for? <laughs> that they're so important that this dude's just like, I need to get out of the script. Can you hook him back up? It was it was because they were trying to transport the princes. But oh. I to where from where they have to put them in uh, micro packs, right? And what does require, that mean, though? They require a power unit. Are they going to shrink these kids? Unit, you sons of bitches! <laughs> they listen. They require a power unit, and in order to get past the scanners, they have to have power. But it's hard to find power because there are stormtroopers everywhere. You see, Gatorade has electrolytes. <laughs> 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 it's it's got what Jedi's crave. What Jedi's crave? <laughs> what do they crave? Electrolytes. <laughs> power packs. <laughs> I need power units in my micro pack. Oh my god, it's so so abrupt. <clears throat> Justin takes his father in his arms and is followed out of the room by Han and Datos. Prepare the boys. We have little time. Dude, like your oldest friend just died. He's not even taking a second. He doesn't. The, the power pack will go away. He doesn't know who will commit suicide next. He doesn't want <laughs> to run out of power. <laughs> God damn it. Princess Zar Couldn't so they take it out of his fucking lightsaber? Could, are they going to take his brain and put it into a small child now? I don't know. I hope they do. There's a whole <laughs> machine for that, and they've run away from that whole area. <laughs> They're in a completely different place now. Remember that where where they juiced the brains, that whole building was destroyed. Yeah. With Princess that. Zara's mom in it, even. Yep. Remember? Because everybody true. commits suicide in this thing. Yeah, but three more pop up. <laughs> like, for real, if they made this movie, they would need to like have the suicide hotline in the opening crawl. <laughs> uh, Princess Zara and Captain Oxus rush out of the room as the general places the power units in the micropacks. Slum dwelling, main area, Tanawi. Oeda and Puck are not happy about being dragged away from their puzzle. Uh, <laughs> Oxus this takes. This motherfucker just died for you, and all I can think about is their fucking switch. Uh, they're royalty. <laughs> yeah, they're... <laughs> what the a death of a peasant. No, oh, my that? white privilege! <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Fuck. Oxus takes the robots into the sleep area. Oh, I'm used to it saying princess. Well, he, like, trades out whether it's princess or Zara. Yeah. I guess depending on her mood or his mood. Now straighten up, Oeda. Remember... Father expects you to follow his ways. We're going on a trip. There will be great danger. You must go to sleep. When you wake, you will be in a strange land. So don't be alarmed. <laughs> it's both his reading of it and the context. I know, right? It's perfect. She like is one of these space princess. Like... You're gonna go to sleep. Shit's gonna be strange when you wake up, but don't freak the fuck out like a nerd. Are you going to sleep too? 
I'll be looking after you. Now be good boys and stand still. Lift your slave. Puck lifts his sleeve and Zara injects him with a sleep serum. Oxus enters just as the little prince collapses into a deep sleep. Quick as lightning, he catches the boy before he can hit the floor. Oh, what the fuck? Is she Zara? Is just gonna stick him and let him fall on the ground like a bitch? Like, fuck him. <laughs> Stand right oh here so I can God, inject shit. you with something that's going to immediately put you on a slab. Stand really close to this end table. <laughs> <laughs> Get over here by the spike. <laughs> the princess injects her other brother and he collapses into her arms. Slum dwelling, dining area, Tanawi. The limp bodies of the two young princes are carried in by Zara and Captain Oxus. They are carefully squeezed into the hollowed out micro cases. Zara pensively watches as the general expertly attaches electrodes to her brother's skull. Han and Datos return from the burial of Akira. The general looks up from his operation. I have no fucking clue what they are doing with these kids. <laughs> they, just sho they just shove some kids in a carry-on and put a GPS tracker in their skull. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway. <clears throat> He's at rest. Are the systems working all right? Full power. Is everything ready? Datos nods yes, as the general closes the case holding Puck. The strain of watching her brothers placed in suspended animation is too great for Zara, and she retreats into the main room. Table Reads will return after this brief word from our sponsors. What's up, docs and docettes? Trevor Thompson, the self-appointed Looney Tunes critic here, and if you like old cartoons and watching online reviewers dissect them, then you probably said the same thing I did about two years ago. Hey, what the fuck? Bear, watch your language, you bud. Every Saturday morning, I do a brand new commentary of a Warner Brothers short. All throughout the month, I do video essays examining the history of these cartoons. Catch my videos on youtube.com slash ferriswheelhouse2, or just use the hashtag Looney Tunes Critic. And now, here's Eric Bauza, the new voice of Bugs Bunny. <laughs> You've been listening to the Looney Tunes Critic. Ain't he a stinker? Lights, camera, action. So the movie's kaput, which means your script ain't worth the buffalo shit on a nickel. Now, back to Table Reads. So... I don't even know what to say at this point. It's it's getting somewhere. I feel like we're in a lull, but like shit's gonna start popping off again. You know, it gets I a can't... lot easier when there's shit we recognize, like the cantina scene. Great, we got a cantina scene. And now what is this shit? Look, I feel like he knows shit was getting really boring, so he's like, what if ancient space samurai commits Seppuku in front of everybody. Yeah, he it's takes like, his battery out. Like, talky, 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 talk. Oh my god, they're all just talking. What if someone just rips his own... What if someone just rips his own heart out? But it's like a robot heart, because he's, like, mostly robot. Pretty yeah. metal. It is, it is interesting how similar this script feels to the prequels. Yeah. Like, mm. it feels... The, the tone and the pacing and, like, the weird fucking scene changes and like all the fucking stupid characters like yeah because i think that a new hope was mostly written by joseph campbell directly sure. or like or like right under his guidance i should say you know yeah. like he was just taking them beat by beat like no what is this you don't need these six characters take them out tighten this up you know pull this together and then george was like oh shit that was hard I better hire Lawrence Kasdan to write the next one. Like, it's it's interesting because he's trying to write this big world, like this very complex world, and tell us about it. He's given us a lot of information, but at the same time, he's telling me nothing. Like, yeah. there's this there's this space king, but everywhere he's gone, even when he died, like I don't know who was sad for him. Like, what planet was like, oh no, my king? Because they're just on this ship, right? So like. 
Is he king of a planet? Is he king of a system? He was system? king of Ten Tenawi, I want to say. Just Tenawi? I don't know, man. So that's what I'm saying. You okay, so <laughs> here's here's why it's confusing. Is because he's the king of this place, but then there's a king of the galaxy. Right. So he's like a sub-king, I guess. Yeah, but it doesn't even explain that. He's not like, no. oh, I'm really scared of of emperor dude like it's just it would be like dude. it would be like if instead of having a president and governors we had a president and then each state had a president right or right, exactly there you go so <laughs> uh, did you just clear it up i think he just cleared it up maybe that was his vision you're seeing into it oh god i don't want to start thinking like george lucas let's get the <laughs> fuck in with this thing <laughs> fade in slum dwelling main room Tanawi. Captain Valor stands brooding near a window overlooking the crowded alleyway. Doesn't that sound like Anakin in the prequels? It does. He does not acknowledge Zara's entrance. She walks over to the window and stands next to the young captain. They are very close, but do not touch. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he does not respond. She is moved by his sorrow and starts to touch the side of his face, but can't bring herself to do it. Her royal training is too strong to let her show her true affection for Justin. Where she the fuck did this come from? Didn't her mom fucking explode like, yeah. like 40 pages ago? Like it's just really soon. I wish it was 40 pages ago. We are not far enough into this script. Well, I definitely know it was a long time ago that Justin's brother died and they threw him into a canyon and he exploded. Yeah, that's true. And never explode? mentioned him again. No, no, no. They've met know. old friends. Nobody's like, hey, uh, you had two kids, right? Yeah, one blew up earlier. Like, <laughs> yeah. Thursday. Like, <laughs> Thursday? <laughs> just... No, 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 no. It's Space Thursday. What yeah, uh, my other son part? died on Space Thursday at nerd, uh, 62 o'clock. <laughs> yeah, 62 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you follow Justin's path, it starts with his brother dying and getting exploded in a canyon. And then it goes to his dad meeting one of his old buddies and like trafficking him to him. Like, yeah. I ain't here now. And his dad fucks off, comes back long enough to rip his fucking heart out. Like, sure, doesn't even greet off. him. His dad doesn't even say like, oh, my yeah. son, it's so good to see you. He's I just like, you. hey, let's sit down. Oh, you guys need a power pack? Yeah, I got this. <laughs> son, be good to the guy I sold you to. No wonder Justin's a fucking white beater. <laughs> got, got all these problems. Yeah, so like now he's... All, all on his own in the world. And so he's brooding. He's, like, it literally says brooding. That's not what you do when you're sad, George. You don't... You fucking cry, man. You're, like, sad. Yeah. But no. As soon as I read that standing, brooding near a window overlooking the crowded alleyway, I literally, like, it just injected an episode two shot into my head. It's better than the shot we, we, we completely glazed over earlier, but the shot with Darth Vader talking to the bad guy, Dodongo, or whatever his name is, and they were just standing over a cavern of people fucking Who are getting screaming. tortured, yeah. Yeah, and, and it's like yeah. they're, having, they're having a conversation, but you can't hear it over the screaming. And it was all that shot. That's all the shot was, was showing two people talk, and you just hear, ah, shit, what? Well, we you see, we that. have to establish that the, the space kingdom is evil. And so what they're doing is there are all these partisans down there. And you can tell they're partisans because they all have color-coded clothes. <laughs> and they're all just being, you know, tortured. And this is in the Star Wars. Uh, torture is done with a floating black ball with a needle stuck to it. <laughs> it just... It's just a, it's just a needle. <laughs> that was actually in Star Wars. You remember, like right. they didn't yeah. even ask me any questions. The blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that's the noise it made. 
Oh, this fucking thing. Uh. She can't bring her, her, her royal training, blah, blah, blah. She breaks down and runs from the room. That's what sad looks like. The young okay. Dai continues okay, wait, wait. his meditation. Her, her royal training is just too strong to let her show her true affection for Justin, but it's not strong enough to keep her from breaking down and running into the other room. <laughs> what the fuck like a teenage girl. The how, the fuck, how the fuck is her royal training? How do you show that? How do you show royal training? I, by traumatizing this dude that just lost his brother, lost his dad, then the one girl that shows him affection, as soon as she touches him, she runs away crying. <laughs> yep. I'm yep. strong for you. <laughs> okay, this next line is kind of fucked up as well. The young die continues his meditation. <laughs> he wasn't even paying attention to her. Yeah, he's like... <laughs> Fucking bitch. Like, but also, he, 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 face bitch. he started, he started the scene with brooding, and finishes the scene with meditation. So, every time we see Anakin looking out a window, is he meditating? And what is his mantra? Is it? It's no fair. It's no fair. <laughs> I'll protect her. It's no fair in the Jedi are a bunch of pricks. It's no fair in the Jedi are a bunch of pricks. <laughs> I hate the prequels. Have I mentioned? No. Oh, here, let's talk about this. Follow <laughs> the music. Spaceport at Gordon. Security ramp. Tonawi. The spaceport is very crowded. People rush about in a panicked rush as loudspeakers blurt out indiscernible announcements. The Royal Galactic Kingdom is in the process of changing the boarding procedures, and the result is chaos. This is his idea. Okay, so the next big thing they're, that's evil that they're going to do is they're going to change boarding procedures. So, like, where it used to be that Group A would sit first, now they're doing it backwards. So Group D sits first, and so the seating is all messed up. The whole plan's screwed. They're gonna find the two little boys in my bag. That's so evil. <laughs> evil. Many flights are delayed, and people are running to and fro, switching boarding ramps. Han guides the rebel group, dressed as a Baltarian crew, though the crowd through the crowded terminal. Oxus and Valor carry the large micro packs strapped to their backs. <laughs> the robots follow a few paces behind. They're changing the boarding procedures. I don't like it. <laughs> so evil. They are swept into a boarding gate and finally reach a security ramp scan station. There are a great number of troops and guards standing around the security area. An officer demands to see their passes and orders. The tension builds as the officer confers with an aide about the passes. The aide speaks quietly into a phone. Where are your component receipts? Valor and Oxus hand the officer two additional disks, which are placed in the computer. A few moments later, the readout appears and the group is motioned through the electron scanners. On the other side of the scanner, new computer disks are issued to the group. The group seems slightly relieved as they walk through several hallways leading to where the freighter is docked. Valor moves next to the general. I don't like the feel of this. Your senses are strong. It's a very small disruption. It's a Latau Legionnaire. Possibly. Stay alert. Warn the others. The group walks through the docking links and into the Baltarian spacecraft. Several royal guards pass them, and everyone is ready for the suspected trap, but nothing happens. So we just had a tension-filled walk through the airport. Yeah, no one no one even was like, I hope they don't discover we have princes in our backpacks. I have small children in my carry-on. We're Please smuggling me. children. <laughs> With electrodes in their heads. <laughs> one day they're gonna be old they're gonna have old men in them. Maybe. 
<laughs> Yikes, Jeff. I just figured out where you went with that. What? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Interior. Baltarian fighter. Tanawi. The group stops in a narrow electronic passageway. What's an electronic passageway? Near I the... think that's called Ethernet, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> the group stops in the information superhighway. It's, it's one of the it's one of the walking uh, uh, walk the running walkways in the airport that you stand oh, yeah. on, or you can walk and it looks like you're going really fast. The internet is a series of tubes. <laughs> the group stops in a narrow electronic passageway near the bridge of the ship. Valor and Oxus unstrap the micro packs containing the two young princes and check the voltage packs. <laughs> Are they still alive? Holy <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Little Louisa is losing power faster than normal. I better check it out. Wait until the situation is secure. Stay here and keep you on keep on your guard. Han. The two young captains grow suspicious of several workmen gathering around the main exit hatch. Han and the general enter the bridge area. Several crewmen sit at elaborate controls and computer stations. Where is your captain? One of the crewmen directs him to a small chamber above the bridge. Valor and Oxus strap on their micropacks as more workmen converge at the main hatch and begin to close it. The two robots, A2 and C3, are confused about what is going on, and wear their gear in anticipation of moving. Pilot Chamber, Batarian Freighter, freighter Tanawi. Han and the General enter a small pilot's chamber and greet the captain, whose face is hidden in the shadows of a computer bank. Welcome, gentlemen. You must have had a difficult journey. We'll be departing shortly. Four armed troops silently enter the room behind the two old die. Their laser swords are drawn. I have been authorized to accept payment for the Chrome Company Corporation. I assume you've brought it with you? The captain moves out of the shadows and is revealed to be Dodana. Damn it! <laughs> Instantly, both Han and the General understand the situation. They turn drawing their laser swords in the move and cut down the four royal troopers. <laughs> the door to the chamber instantly seals shut. Dodonna hasn't made any moves and remains unusually calm. The two die turn to face him. Um, I was going to say, I remember Dodonna now, and I was using him as the emperor voice. So I'm going to go back with that. Do it. <clears throat> it's over, gentlemen. The chamber is sealed. Don't force me to release the Jigas. <laughs> Jigas? Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> Jigas. <laughs> A tone sounds, and Dodonna turns to an intercom. Situation secure. Prisoners taken to Pole B. Twelve casualties. Gas was necessary. <laughs> That's for the report. <laughs> Han and the general relax and drop their weapons. The door silently opens behind them and six guards enter wearing face masks. They bind the two die with chrome microcuffs. What the fuck? <laughs> Shit. How? Uh, uh, well, they're microcuffs, so probably just their index fingers. I don't understand. BD. Like, they didn't even have a fight. Like, they had their fucking swords out. The intercom said that all their Dude. friends were captured. So now, they have to give up. Oh, okay. they just really believe the Donna. He's like, it's over. They're like, shit. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they're just like, oh, well, I guess I gotta give you my laser sword. All right, put my index fingers together. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear about the die gas? That's really close to die gas. <laughs> the fuck? Uh, a satisfied smile creeps across Dodonna's face. General Skywalker seems unimpressed with the trap. 
at last it's ended. To the guard. Take them to hold the, take them to hold G. I I don't want them with the others. Prepare for departure. The troopers escort Han and the general out of the chamber and down several hallways. Interior. Baltari and freighters. Tanawi. Eight troops march Han and the general into the hold of the ship. They pass near the main exit where A2 and C3 stand deserted, looking lost. C3 sees the general pass in a nearby hallway. Well, there he is. Come on. The robots waddle off after the die prisoners. As the small procession passes detention cell B, where the princess and the others are being held, Han and the general let out a horrifying die scream and leap to the corridor ceiling, thrusting <laughs> their bound wrists into the lighting fixtures. What? <laughs> they land on top of the troops, instantly breaking the necks of the four guards with expertly placed blows. The eight surviving guards are momentarily dumbfounded. Han and the general grab laser swords from their victims and swiftly cut down the remaining troops. Han grabs a small card from one of the dead guards and starts for detention cell B. What was the difference between being in the hall and where they were? What changed to where they're like... To this where, is what totally is this, the fucking prequels, man. What is this horrifying die scream before they fucking... Oh, play it. Hiyaga, hiyaga, hiyaga! Play it to die scream. Get him to die scream. Hiyaga, hiyaga, hiyaga! <laughs> what the fuck? Dude, can you imagine that? You're just, like, you're just a police officer taking, <laughs> taking the prisoner, and then they make that noise, and then they jump on your head. <laughs> Watch it. Those are cutters. <laughs> The general grabs one of the dead troopers and tosses him against the cell door. Red rays engulf the body and holds it there. Han then places the card in a slot and the door silently slides open. Valor and Oxus leap for the dead guard, then notice the death ray surrounding him. Whoa! General Skywalker grabs another body and throws it into the <laughs> doorway. Pass between them! This is my D&D campaign. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Valor squeezes between the slain guards and is untouched by the rays. Oxus and the princess quickly follow, picking up weapons as they leave. They've taken the cases. Are they aware of the boys? I don't think so. Find them. Use your seeker. We'll meet you at the main hatch. Watch yourselves. If an alarm is given, they'll gas the entire ship. Yes, sir. Oxus and Valor each take a small humming device from their utility belts and head down a narrow hallway. The General, Han, and the Princess continue toward the main hatch. A2 and C3 have been completely confused by this turn of events. They eventually follow the General toward the exit hatch. Electro Closet Hallway. Fuck me. <laughs> Electro space closet. Electro uh, space laser closet. Then they got the death rays that were behind the cutters that were behind the door that opens with the key card. I gotta get this door open. You got any more corpses on you? <laughs> any more bodies we got? How many layers can we get through? There was like 12. <laughs> Electro closet hallway. Voltarian freighter. Tanawi. The two young captains reach a storage area of the huge spacecraft. They watch their seekers as they move along a row of electro closets. They quietly sneak past a group of workmen assembling a large gyro housing. A second row of micro packs is searched to no avail. If they were discovered, they would have sent to the medical station. There are more storage areas on the far side. Main hatch area. Baltarian freighter, Tanawi. Han and the general reach the main hatch, closely followed by Zara and the two robots. Several lights over the hatch flash on and off. The general cuts a camera off the wall with his laser sword. They're going to take off. It's too late. C3, come over here. The lanky chrome man approaches the general, who is studying a complex computer control panel next to the hatch. 
Yes, sir. May I be of service? Get this hatch open. Counter lock the departure mechanisms. Blah, 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 blah. Get this hatch open. Counter lock the departure pattern. You could have just went with whatever you said and it would have fucking worked. The space mechanism. <laughs> Counter lock the departure space magno electro gyro <laughs> door. Gyro. Gyro is <laughs> a good one. Gyro, gyro hatch. <laughs> The robot immediately starts pushing buttons on the panel. <laughs> Why didn't you just fucking push the button? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I thought he was going to do some R2 shit with yeah, like a data interface. Like, I thought he was going to have his like his electro penis come He's like, out. Come over here. Push these buttons. <laughs> can, we, can we talk about how yes, to can we talk about how some movie things? Like, I've been on many job sites and directed a lot of job sites, and I've never, like, yelled at someone, like, come over here, and then told them what I needed them to do. <laughs> like, I'm like, hey, can you grab that real quick? So, push that button, bitch. <laughs> push a lot. You know what? I, I gotta stop there. Fade out. <laughs> I just, I, I can't anymore today. I gotta stop. Holy shit. Get over here and push buttons! Push, push those buttons! It's so funny. Um, so that's it for part five. Can you believe we're on part five already? Yes. Yeah, I can. <laughs> we still have... <laughs> almost 50 pages left. God damn it, Sean. You said we was almost done with this one. It's 74. I did not say we were almost done. I said we were halfway. And that oh. I needed to make more graphics for the episodes because I didn't make <laughs> enough. Well, now you can just... Yeah, you got a whole bunch of ideas for pushing buttons and little kids shoved in the small packages. My images actually came from some college students made a short film based on the earliest or like a trailer for the star wars based on the earliest um ralph mccrory art um and i just took some screen grabs from that and they work pretty well that's, that's cool so look that up on youtube everybody um because i didn't credit them on the images uh <laughs> They're just episode images. You barely ever see them unless you follow us or go to tablereadspodcast.com um, where you can see them on our blog. Josh, tell people where they can find you online. You guys can find me at joshuajbaker.com. I'm doing a lot of video work lately. Um, I also do some voiceover work as well. If you're interested in reaching out to me directly, josh, J-O-S-H, at joshuajbaker.com. And again, go to tablereadspodcast.com for all your table reads needs, I guess. And uh, if you're interested in the show Stargirl, which you should be because it's really great, listen to Stargirl After Show. You can find that at stargirlaftershow.com. That's it for us. We will see you next week for uh, part six of this fucking thing. Um, and until then, uh, we will miss you. This podcast was created by Sean McBee. For more, visit TableReadsPodcast.com. Cut to black.